I'm going to do a little video, simple little thing, shouldn't take long, a few minutes maybe. I'm going to build a PIR motion sensor for a doorway, so if you go through a doorway or in a room or something like that, it will beep a buzzer when it detects movement. Battery powered, it's going to use some AA batteries, you could use rechargeables even if you really wanted to, you could use lithium ions if you wanted to. This needs to be like at least a 5 volt power supply basically. The idea is to use this PIR sensor here, which I've already got. I'll put links down below for this. Um, but you can get these really cheaply in AliExpress or variants of this particular PIR sensor. There's different, there's different ones here. This particular one, the output pin on here, it's a 3.3 volt output. So you put 5 volts in, it's got a 3 volt regulator on here, or 3.3 volt regulator. And then the output is actually 3.3 volts when it's active. So I've got to do a conversion for that. There are versions which will put out a 0 volt active. So it's going to be floating, like an open collector output. So it'd be no connection or it'd be pulled to zero volts when it's active. So it's different versions. So you may have to modify the circuit depending on how you need to use it. In my case, it's output 3.3 volts, which isn't enough. So what I'm actually doing is I'm going to drive this transistor here. Could use a MOSFET too if you wanted to, but I've just got a transistor here. I've got loads of these, so I thought I'd use one of these. So 2SC945 and a resistor here just to take the stress off it, dropping for 3.3 volts to the like 0.6 or 0.7 volts this will need on the gate to drive it. So this is basically it. You've got a PIR sensor, transistor, resistor, a buzzer, a bit of circuit board and some battery holders. You may need to adapt this to your own available parts or whatever, but this is what I'm going to use. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you think it's going to be interesting, or if you want to see other things I may do. Uh, oh, also we've got a switch here as well. We've got to turn anything on and off. So first thing I'm going to do is mount the sound on here. Now what I'm going to do here is actually have the main power supply rail commoned up between the sounder and the PIR sensor. So they're basically in parallel, right? Because I'm going to be switching the negative, not the positive. This is an old piece of perf board from something else. I don't know. I'll risk it from another thing I built some time ago. It's been around for a while, a bit dirty, so I'm not soldering perfectly well, but I could add flux, but this will be fine. See, here we go. So this one needs to line up the positive on this one. Got to put them quite closely together because I've got a box here which I want to put on. I want to put them on the end of the box. So they should be basically centered together. They're pretty close. And as close as possible, I think. I might be able to get away with having one space between them. Let me just see how it's going to fit in the box. I do want to put it on the end of the box, so I think that would be fine, actually. I think that would work. Actually, I'll just change my mind about which transistor I'm going to use. Now, the 2SC945 is what I used. That worked fine. Um, but because I lay it on the board here, it actually worked out in my favor if I changed the pinouts around slightly. So ignore the dirty soldering right now. I'll also clean up afterwards. But that's the VCC line there, which is going to be like, you know, the battery supply. That middle pin there is the ground, and that pin there is the output. Now, the pin out on the 945 is an emitter collector base. If I use a different transistor which has got emitter base collector, I could put it straight across here in those terminals there and cut this track here and put a C resistor in there, and that will solve that problem. And just means straight in, no messing around crossing leads or whatever. So, I might use a different transistor. So, I'm going to use a 2N3904, which is also another jelly bean part. You can get these really easily, they're really common parts. This has got the pinout that I want for the layout on this board. So I'm going to place it like this, obviously on the back of the board. So it's emitter, base, collector, and all I've got to do is cut that track and insert a resistor in there. Change the resistor. The one I had before was the one I was using for doing testing. So now I've got a smaller resistor, which is a bit more practical. I've already cut the track where it's going to go. Get to solder down. Okay, now it's going to solder that to that pin. Really want to do this nicely. I would actually design a circuit board and done some service mount parts and. That's so nice and tidy, but this is a one off thing. I don't need to build another one, so why bother? Let's just do a bit of prototyping. So, for the battery pack side of it, I'm just going to put these in series, so it's going to be running basically off 6 volts nominal. Obviously, it can be a bit more than that, a bit less. This has got a 3.3 volt regulator on that board, so it doesn't really matter what the voltage is and within reason. It can be, you know, probably 12 volts, it'd be right. The buzz is rated at 5 volts. But it's only going to be used for short bursts, right? So it's not going to be running continuously like that. So it can take slightly more. Now I've done some test voltages running at about 8 volts and it was still fine. It certainly gets a lot louder. <laughs> so having a slightly higher voltage on it is probably beneficial because it's also just going to go off like a second or two, then that's it. It's off and it stays off again until the next time there's a movement. It's only very periodic usage. So I'm not too worried about overvolting it. I think it's okay. So I'm just going to put these battery packs in series. That's why I've actually made a board this big, so I've got this rail here, which is going to be the series connection for the batteries. So I put negative on here, put the series connection on here, and put the positive from the other pack to the switch, and the switch will then come back to the board. So the switch is just in series with the battery pack to turn on and off. Pretty simple. Right, that's still connection's done. 
let's put some batteries in this if it actually works, then I shall build it into the box. I've already breadboarded this, like this sensor here, with a power supply and obviously the 2SC945 transistor and the original 1K resistor I had. So, different transistor, different resistor, it should still work though. Alright, batteries are installed, let's turn it on. Well, that's promising, buzzer works. Now it does have delays and stuff like that, it's like a settling time thing going on. So, here we go, it's detecting me. I'll try to move for a minute. If I move now it should go off. Here we go, it's working. So let's measure the centres from here to here, it's about 21mm. So I need to make sure I've got a 21mm centre on here. Yeah, thereabouts. And I need to basically make some holes in here which are 21 millimeters apart and about the same height. So I need to make sure I've also got enough height. Don't need to go too high or too low. Try and get this drilled correctly. Right, there's the holes made in the box. Yeah, good enough. Hopefully it all lines up. It kind of does, I think. See how close I've got it now. Both right there. So let's push right up against it. So I want to do is just hot glue that in. And that'll do the job. Also you've got to put the switch in the other side. I'm going to double side tape these into the sides like this. Put the switch over there. Button out. Alright, so I thought, well, since I had the hot glue gun out, rather than using double side tape, I'll just hot glue these in the sides. It'll hold just fine. Um, I had to leave like a gap down the side to allow for the lid, because the lid does have this recessed step in here. It's actually supposed to, supposed to be like a waterproof lid, but obviously in this case it doesn't matter. But I had to try to leave a gap here to allow for the lid so it will come down inside that edge there. But with hot glue gun, easy, you just put a nice thick layer on, don't compress it too much, done. So that's all in place, that shouldn't fall out. Switch is in place. Yep, that will go down nicely, that will screw down, you can see, that will squash down. Give it a second to reset. Now if I move, it should go off. It does. Excellent, it's working. Nice little project, nice and simple. Maybe share the video. People might be interested in knowing how to build one of these things. Could be really handy for, you know, just knowing someone's walking into a room somewhere, you know. You can put this on a shelf. Now, in theory, the batteries on this last about a year. All right, so she only has to replace these batteries once a year. If you use lithium iron cells instead, you could use two of those, 18650s and Sirius, for example, that would work just as well as four AAs and also be rechargeable. You could use rechargeable batteries in here too. If you wanted to use like nickel metal hydrides, you might stick another battery pack in there. So you've got six cells instead of four. There is space to do that. That would then give you a higher voltage and allow for that 1.2 volt nominal battery voltage to the 1.5 volt you get with AAs and give you a bit of a longer lifetime. If you like, subscribe, share the video. Might be interesting for someone. There's playlist down here to check out things I think you should watch. Over here's a playlist that YouTube thinks you should watch. Here's a subscribe link in case you haven't done it already. It's part me telling you. And here's a Patreon support link over here if you want to help support the channel. Help me to make more content. Bye.